Hey everybody, we are going to take a look at part three of our building an ordinary least squares regression model by hand. Um, and again, the basic idea is you run a regression, right? You get that nice page of uh, statistics coming at you from uh, Stata or R, uh, whatever program you're using. Uh, and you've got all these numbers, right? And it's a great exercise to go through piece by piece and understand exactly where those values are calculated. So in parts one and two of this little series, we looked at first the estimation, right? How the B0 hat and the B1 hat, the OLS estimates of the intercept and the slope in a simple XY regression uh, were calculated. And then using that, we walked through the calculation of the Y hat, the predicted dependent variable for each observation. From that, we calculated the residual, the difference between the actual y and the predicted y, the y minus y hat. And then we squared and summed all that up, and we ended up with the sum of squared residuals, which is kind of our primary uh, measure of fit, right? So the smaller that number is, the more of the variation in y our model, our x variable, can explain. So in part three, we're going to add to that uh, that idea of measuring the success of our model, right? The, the goodness of fit by constructing, again, piece by piece, observation by observation in a little trivial example, uh, the total sum of squares, the explained sum of squares, and finally, the R squared, the coefficient of determination as it were. So if you recall in our little uh, Excel sheet here, we started off with our 10 observations of X and Y and all of those columns that we see are the piece by piece ingredients of what we've calculated so far. So we've got the B0 hat here, the B1 hat, uh, and then this number, the sum of all of those squared residuals, that's the RSS. Right? Here is the RSS. So we get this value 25.07. And we're not exactly sure what to make of that, right? So we know that that's as small as it can possibly be given the observations that we have by definition of ordinary least squares, right? But to put it into context, we need these additional measures, right? So starting from that RSS, again, which is kind of the, the degree to which our model is unable to explain the variation in Y, let's think about, well, what we're trying to explain, the total variation in y. So we can calculate this as the so-called total sum of squares, the TSS, the sum of the square deviations between the observation of y and the sample mean of y, so the sum of the y minus y bar squared. And I put here that that's roughly equivalent, right, capturing the same uh, essence, if you will, uh, as the sample variance in y. Of course, we're not dividing through by the degrees of freedom, um, but the larger the TSS is, the larger the variation in y is. So it's, uh, again, capturing the same idea. So simple enough, right? We've got all the ingredients right here uh, back in Excel. So we'll create a new column here. We can just label this our y minus y bar. And so for each observation, we're just going to take the given value of our dependent variable y minus the sample mean that we've calculated here. So this will be equal, our value b2 minus, and then remember we'll use that little trick, we will fix the row and column uh, at that b13 level. So we use the dollar sign, and this is an Excel, similar if you're using uh, Google Sheets, b dollar sign 13, and of course, to make it the ingredient into this TSS, we're going to need to square these values, right? So this is going to be the y minus y bar squared for each observation. And now if we just, let's widen that out a little bit, copy that formula all the way down. So these are the, each of these square deviations from the mean for our y value. And then we can copy this summation command right over. And we get this total value of 114.1. So this is our TSS. So the easy way to think about this 
is in squared units of our y variable. This is the total variation, 114.1 squared units. The RSS, the 25.07, that's the squared variation in y that we were unable to explain. So now we can kind of put that into context. The next element here is just the rest of the variation, right? So what we will call the explained sum of squares, the ESS, is the sum of the square deviations not between y and y bar, but between y hat, our prediction, and y bar. Right? So note, if we kind of scroll back and forth between the TSS and the ESS, all we're doing is replacing the y with the y hat. And the idea being, we want to see how much of that deviation from the mean our prediction, our y hat, is able to capture. And we could do this the easy way just by noting that all of the variation in y, the TSS, is either unexplained, the RSS, or explained, the ESS. And we could just calculate it as the difference. But let's, let's verify that that's actually going to work. So we will take, let's get one more column going over here. So this will be the ingredients, the piece by piece ingredients to that ESS. So it's going to be the y hat minus y bar and put a two there to indicate that we're going to be squaring it. So we have our y hat column here. So we can take this equal to y hat minus and remember we want to use that same mean indicator. So that was back here right, at B13. So column B, row 13, all squared. Copy that all the way down. Copy the summation command over. And now we have the explain sum of squared, the ESS. Easy enough, right? And as you see, the deviation, and we don't want to make too much out of this for each observation, but as the deviation between the ingredient to the TSS and the ESS, that they are fairly close together in some of those observations, that's indicating that our model has a pretty good fit, right? Same idea here. The larger the proportion the ESS makes up of the TSS, the better the model did. And so finally, that's the last calculation here is the R squared what percentage of that TSS is explained? The percentage of the total variation in Y that's explained by our X variable, that's the R squared. So we can calculate that R squared with this simple ratio right, of the ESS value divided by the TSS value, and we get a number here of 0.78. So our X variable and our little example here is able to explain 78% of the variation in Y. And of course, that should be equal to one minus the percentage of variation that we are unable to explain. So if we take one minus the RSS divided by the TSS, we get the same thing, right? Just in a much smaller font. There we go. Okay, so now when we see that output in Stata, we can think back and say, okay, I know exactly how every ingredient to those numbers were calculated. And in fact, why don't we just go ahead and do that just to verify what we are looking at here. So let's go ahead and just copy those first three columns. There we go. Find Stata, open up the data editor paste them in with the variable names as the first row. So we've got our 10 observations of our X and our Y and go ahead and run the regression. So just regress Y space X and we should see some familiar terms here, right? So just like we saw before, the coefficient on X, that's the B1 hat, the constant, that's the B0 hat. Well, now we see the model sum of squares, that's how Stata labels what we're calling the explained sum of squares. The portion of the variation unexplained, the RSS, the residual sum of squares, that matches our calculation as well. 
add them up and you get the total sum of squares. And for the percentage, we get that R squared. So that's calculated simply as model sum of squares over total sum of squares gives you that ratio right there. Okay, so good enough for now. Uh, we've still got some numbers here that we haven't quite explained, so we're going to be moving on the next time we kind of dip into this material, what will be part four in this uh, series. We'll be looking at our hypothesis testing measure, so our standard errors and our t-statistics for the individual slope coefficients from a regression. So we'll see exactly how those are calculated and verify it in Stata. So go ahead and play along with this. Hopefully it makes sense. Have any questions, leave them in the comments, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.